Um, gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Jason Paquin, who is Chief Executive Officer, and Louise Scheidler, who's Business Development from Chaser. And Jason and Louise will be talking to us about the number one thing they learned from asset management, which is not about technology, which sounds very intriguing. And I'm looking forward to, to hearing more. So welcome to you both. Thank you. Just waiting a second for Louise to come on video here. Hello, right. everybody. We're ready to go. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Paquin. I'm the CEO of Chesapeake Systems and a very brief intro to Chesapeake Systems. Uh, here at Chesa, we really act as strategic partners to media content creators. We focus on helping them to discover, design, and deploy the right technologies and the right workflows that meet their business needs. And our approach ultimately is to stand by our customers, provide trusted support, and to always bring new ideas. Um, uh, welcome to be here with Louise Shiler. Louise? Yeah, thanks, Jason. Uh, happy to be here chatting with you today, although I think we'd all agree we'd rather be in person. Uh, and I had a business development on the East Coast for Chesa, where here our bread and butter is media asset management, integration, and implementation. And we at Chesa bring a consultative approach to our work. We're not just technology installers, we're workflow therapists. And over many years of man projects, we've learned a few things and as we're gonna chat about today. Uh, so when it comes to success at a basic level, that's pretty clear. Every client is looking for no surprises roll out with a clear ROI. And how do we get there? Uh, so ready to pull back the curtain on workflow therapy and share some insights, Jason? Absolutely. All right, so what signs and getting started when you're getting started with a client, what signs, signs do you look for at the beginning of an engagement to judge what's going to be needed to make this a success? Sure. So first, at a very broad answer, we look at how prepared the client really is when they start their engagement with us. So some examples of what we look for to really judge that preparedness is how fully have they defined their own goals for their project? And by fully, I mean all the way down to what it means for their business specifically. Um, another area that we focus on is just how much understanding of the landscape of media asset management platforms out there do they have in the market today? Every one of them takes a different approach to achieve many of the same things, and every one of them also can achieve very different things. And just understanding that at a base level is very important. Um, next is, how far down the road are they in the financial planning of a system? These systems aren't just one and done. These are systems that we focus on where there's constant integration, constant deployment of new features, new workflows, um, adopting new features and roadmaps. And all of that takes upkeep and it takes a financial cost for the life of the system in some way. Um, ultimately, every management, or I'm sorry, every engagement you know, has a different degree of technical planning has a different degree of people planning and of resource planning. Our goal is to ask a lot of questions and identify where there might be gaps in those areas and then help fill those gaps because not everyone's going to come to the table with everything fully planned out already for us. You know, one of the areas that we've talked about that really sheds light on for us how technically someone understands what they're walking into an engagement that they usually have with us is when they say that they're starting fresh and they say that it's going to be a clean install, nice and simple, put in a base system, we're starting fresh, this will be, you know, a piece of cake and then we'll do more from there. And our reality is there's never an example of a project where you're actually starting fresh. The only example I could think of is one where you're starting your business today, you've never shot any content, you've never had any storyboards and you have no data and no one's come to us with that situation and actually moved forward yet. Um, at least not many examples of that. So you're never actually starting fresh. You're always migrating from something. And our most successful engagements are ones where the clients understand all of this planning that's really necessary to get this right, as well as everything that really does need to migrate. Yeah, some great food for thought to get us going there. And off of that last thought on migration, let's talk about what it takes to truly migrate. What's all the scope and play there? Because people think, of course, okay, I got content, that stuff's got to migrate. But what else does that entail? Sure. And it's what even is the content? Is it the asset record? Is it the data on the file system? You could argue all different angles of that. Everyone uses all of these terms differently. Ultimately, what needs to migrate is everything. 
Every single thing is a migration in some way. That's the way I like to think of it. Um, Pre-COVID, pre-2020, our common deployments and our common migrations were either from a file system into a MAM or from one MAM to another MAM. And rarely did we actually move data from one storage silo to another or from on-prem storage to cloud storage. It was typically data stayed where it already lived and we moved uh, asset records and many other things around that from one uh, front-end system of a MAM to another. And there's always a reason for doing that. One could be that you're looking for a better search and retrieve. And if you're looking for better search and retrieve, it's not just a matter of taking asset records out of one system or the file system and moving them into a MAM. It really gets into what are the reasons you're implementing the new MAM and what are the features that are better for search and retrieve for you that you need to then adopt. And by adopting them, you have to change something in order to massage the data and get it into that new structure, whether that's metadata schemes, database structures, moving the asset records in different formats. There are so many layers to that. All of that stuff is really important to keep in mind. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to just take the asset records and say, I have a, say an XML format, I'm going to export them. That's compatible to import them. You import them and you just move the problem of the original system to the new system. You really have to migrate a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of um, schemas and database structures in order to get into the new system and really get the benefit of it. Another example is you might want to change the access controls of files or the asset records themselves or change the ability for different roles, different groups of users within your organization to access content. And so then you need to migrate security levels. You need to migrate users and groups and roles and permissions. And that might also involve migrations at the file level. Now, during COVID and during 2020, and I'm sure very much beyond, a lot of our deployments also do include moving that data behind the scenes. So now we get into, first, why are we moving the data? Is it for remote access? Is it a more secure system? Is it a faster system? Lately, it's been for the remote access. And when we're moving the data behind the scenes as well, then we have a lot more decisions to make around moving, migrating those asset records, that metadata is, do we bring the data with it and the asset you know, record and metadata as a sidecar? Or do those go in completely disparate systems, then we marry them back together later? A lot of planning needs to go into all this. Lastly, something that I get very passionate about is the actual change around the end users themselves. The users need to change their roles. Sometimes it's not drastic, sometimes it is, but in no scenario that we've been involved in for many years has the system replaced a person. What it has done is it's changed a person's role, and when you're changing the role because you're implementing technology next to that person very purposefully, then what you're doing is you're committing that person to output more for their organization because now they have more systems that should have an ROI on their investment to work with them to actually achieve more for the organization. And accepting that and really defining that's really important. You have to migrate those users' roles, just as important as the technology, the assets, the records. Excellent. Many layers to that onion and yeah. considering all those different facets there. So it's great we have an idea of all these things in play. What about unforeseen roadblocks, things that have caused failures or hiccups unexpectedly along the way? What, what are some things along those lines? Well, I'll start off with the least common. The least common when you actually have made a technology choice that is truly aligned with your business, that least common roadblock is actually technology. It's almost always planning, expectations, management. So the first cause for a lot of stumbling in a project is typically over committing to what should be a future phase. You can't have a phase that's too long, that's so long that things change behind the scenes or in the project during the project itself. So the first example of that to dig into is your own business. In our experience, if you have a phase that's anything over three months long, there will be a change in your business that will change your perception of or success in the project. Some CQ1 examples. 2020. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, what, you know, so many examples of that. First, merger and acquisition, it's happening all over our industry, it's not slowing down. Um, org structures change, new employees come in, employees will go, and just the change management around the employees and forming new teams and the approach to forming new teams successfully, 
layering that into a project of implementing new technology, especially one that's going to organize all of your assets, um, it's a lot to take on at one time. Those things will happen if you have a project that's too long. You also might have new broadcast partners, new shows, new sources. Um, and then your financial planning might change. Your CFO might have some new guidelines for you and things will change in the middle of your project. Another area that is just as much over committing is when you have a uh, scenario where you don't expect the tech to change when you always should. So tech changes every day in our environment. You have to really balance planning out too far with changing too quickly. You can't change too quickly. You have to have some self-control. The, the, the approach that you really want to take, I'm just doing a quick time check. The approach you really want to take here is you want to be aware of technical changes that come and you want to be able to adopt them in future phases, but you don't want to get distracted by them and start doing rework during the project in the phase you're in now. Another area of stumbles is vendor relationships. You really have to make sure that you don't clash with your vendor. You have to make sure that your values line up, your approaches line up, or you'll be replacing them in the medium term at best. Most tech can be made to do anything you want it to do with enough money and enough integration, but it takes a lot of money. If you align on what's important to the business and you challenge each other on the approach, then you'll have a successful implementation with that partner. So yeah, let's go so, ahead and to our next one. Yeah, kind of a laundry list of things that can go wrong there. Uh, so the obvious follow-up, how do we head that off and avoid those pitfalls? Absolutely. So we'll finish off on, on this topic here and really focus on the things to do up front and the ways to approach the project. One is you have to include every party that might need to be included in the future. You have to include them up front in your project internally so that you don't have them causing a delay later. Eventually, your social team or your sales team or your finance team, whether they seem like they should be involved or not, if they're a part of your business and use your content, they're going to need to know what you're doing behind the scenes because they will be affected. The second you need input from them, you don't want them to halt everything and ask you for an explanation. Um, the next thing is you really need to develop clear, specific goals. What you want to do, and it's, you know, some people roll their eyes at the term, but it's really important, is you want to have smart goals. They have to be really specific and really measurable. That's what gets you stakeholder buy-in, and that's what keeps you funded. So as a quick example, if you have a client come to us and they say, we want to ingest faster, we can certainly make that happen, but why are we doing it? You have to keep asking why until you really know what's important for the business. So using a current day example, you might want to ingest at a speed that allows new content on election night, you know, of one of the candidates, you know, parties. And you want to take any videos and any images that you shoot during that election night and you want to post them within three minutes through your social media team. You might want to do that because you know that as a news outlet, your competitor can only do it in four or five minutes. If you do it in three, you get more eyes on your content because you're first to put it out there. You're the breaking news. So as a result, you probably increase viewers and you probably increase some ad revenues. If those are what's important to the business, you have to define that, show that to every person involved in the project that's working on that project for you, and then show them how you're going to measure that. If they all know how you're going to measure it, then they're all going to be aligned and marching to the same beat. The next thing that you really need to focus on is you need to only invest in the tech that actually meets your needs and doesn't overly exceed it. So using a similar example, a news outlet that needs breaking news speed and might need to change workflows to work with new partners on the fly probably has a different need in their system than a large corporation doing a vast amount of training content and employee engagement videos. It's not to say the value of the work is any different or the value of the systems or the size of the systems is very different, but the approaches there are extremely different. And so it's being really clear on what approach fits for you, which is going to relate to the ability to integrate, how you integrate, the types of APIs, the types of SDKs, and who is actually going to work on them. The way you figure that all out is you interview everyone. You have to interview them as if they are you're going to be your employees. When you take that approach, you'll figure out, do they really care about and question for the purpose of understanding what the real needs of your business are? If they're questioning and they're doing discovery to challenge the needs of your business, they're probably not aligned with you. But if they're really doing that discovery to understand your business more, 
then you have a scenario where they care about meeting your needs and they will work to do that. And then you see if they're a fit in your organization, the features will match. Then you can move forward confidently. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a bit of relief uh, antidote to some of those pitfalls and bringing it all around here at the end. What key takeaways should we remember from our little workflow therapy session here? Sure. And while we go over this, I'm just going to throw up a quick slide on how to contact us for the rest of the day here and in the future. Let me throw that up. Yes, we have a virtual booth. Come by and say hi. We'd love to chat some more. So some quick points, a quick recap. One, don't migrate problems from one system into another, whether that's actually man to man or not. Don't migrate the problems you have today into the new system and, and have a too short sight of a view. Um, next is really be aligned on the core needs of your business with your vendors and your partners. Be really specific on those goals, what those needs are and how you're gonna measure those needs, how you're gonna measure the outcomes to achieve those goals. And then lastly, don't over plan, don't over commit early. Pace yourself with specific goals at that time. Allow the tech to change behind the scenes. Be adaptable. At the end of every one of your phases, you're going to have new perspectives, and you need to embrace those new perspectives that come along the way. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for the insights, Jason. Thank you, Louise. Thanks very much, Jason and Louise. That was, that was great. Um, some really um, interesting insights and, and a great discussion. So thank you very much to both of yeah. you for joining us this afternoon.